All right guys, I, I popped over to Billy's to make a quick video on the pro slide and I also wanted to make another video because I've been absolutely terrible about making videos this year, but that's kind of what we're going to talk about or why I haven't been making videos is why we're making this video uh, because I've been super busy and so has Billy and we're going to focus on Billy's business because this is lawn crack and it's all about content for lawn and landscape business owners, right? So. I built Billy's website and I've been running Google ads and doing some you know SEO optimizations to get it to the top of Google uh, it is you know crushing Google so Billy's been just inundated with leads and we you know I I believe I'm very good at it I think my clients will tell you that and I can look at the analytic data and know that I'm good at building websites running ads and doing SEO right but uh, we had a trick up our sleeve in Billy's scenario because we actually had the opportunity to purchase my old lawn care company's domain and then redirect it to Billy's site and it got all of the SEO juice dating back to till like 2009, 2010 when my original website hit the internet and my original website was at the top of Google too. So, it's been crazy, right? Yeah. So <laughs> tell them <laughs> about how you've been dealing with the amount of leads coming in, uh, quoting the jobs, getting the jobs done, having to buy another truck, buy another equipment, get another crew going, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so a bit of an update on B&B. Last year was the beginning of the first year for us and we actually started in the middle of the year so this is kind of our first full year yeah so we we expected some growth we made steps to take care of the business that we thought we were going to get and it kind of went well above that and if i would have known that in the beginning of the year i would have doubled down obviously i would have gotten two trucks instead of one i would have hired four people instead of two and um, so this year we expanded and we filled out a list very quickly, like I mean, I think by like May or something like that, we had yeah. had the second truck getting bought and moving on. And then I kind of expected that to trickle off. But the thing with what Ryan does is that it's kind of like a snowball effect. It's like once it gets going, it just gets bigger and faster, and you need to be a little prepared for it. So I think it's nice to to see that it's working, and I look forward to. Uh, you know, next year knowing that it's going to continue and getting more, more trucks and more, more crew, as we all know in the lawn care business, that's kind of the hardest part is keeping or getting employees that are capable of doing the job and want to stick around for it. So right now in the course of about a year, a little bit over a year, we have went from needing jobs to needing workers and the jobs are just coming left and right. And there's really seems to be no stopping it at this point. And even you know with the amount of traffic that we're getting i think he told us something how many people are hitting the yeah. website billy's website's getting 800 to 900 people on it a month and that is just absolutely insane for a local lawn and landscape service one year one year just, you know so yeah so i mean we're getting calls for all kinds of work we don't do yet that we will in the future and we'll grow towards that but i mean there's a lot of aerating overseeding people are asking for we started doing mulch in the beginning of the year just because of the phone calls um i mean it, it really has kept my phone blowing up my email goes off all the time we we use a system so that when the emails come in that i have the information i need from them already like they're their uh, address and things of that nature so I can just go online look at their house and then send them a neat, like a, a quote within you know minutes of getting it if I happen to be in the office and whatnot but either way like it's keeping everything so full that I'm just you know we're really picking and choosing the jobs that that we want which is where you want to be because you don't want to really reach for jobs and you know you need to have like a minimal so like it helps to achieve that for sure and I've been yeah. I've been completely impressed with the amount just just the service that we get from him because I kind of thought I knew what was going to happen and it, it seems like it went well and well above that so. yeah I mean I'm, I'm honestly shocked with the results of Billy's website but 
Um, I, don't, I didn't really want to focus on, on the website and all that stuff. Like, I kind of wanted to get into, like, how when you call me, yeah. it's more often like Billy's calling me because he needs to vent, because he's super stressed out, because, you know, he does, he's just like, I can't, I can't get to all these leads and blah, blah, blah. And I have access to the email and I have access to everything, right? Um, and I could see it. And I remember, it was, it was just a couple weeks ago, probably three, four weeks ago, I hopped on. And Billy had like 20, 25 unread quote requests. From in like three email. days. They weren't yeah, that I mean, old. It like. was. <laughs> it, it was, I was like, oh man, he is not freaking kidding. But yep. Billy, Billy got with Service Auto Pilot from the get go. And we originally just had, you know, native website forms <laughs> where people would fill that out and their, the information would end up in the email inbox and contact them. But it was a while back. We swapped yeah. over to the SA3 forms or whatever, and I think that's awesome, right? So everybody's, when it they loads, fill out the form, it, yes. it's into the CRM. It loads them as a lead, like already. So yeah. even, I mean, just for instance, even if I don't pick them up as a customer this year, I have their information right. Right, to send them deals next year when I'm looking for more jobs, yes. things like that. So that, that's what I was gonna get at. With this, I mean, you know, if you're not deleting your emails and whatnot, potentially, you could go back through and scrape all that data. That would be a long manual process. But with the forms hooked up, now everything's just in the database. We could export, you know, addresses, you know, names and addresses, and then we could do a mail campaign to just the people who have contacted us within the past year or two, yeah. right? We know they're actively in the market looking for a lawn and landscape company. Now we can send them a postcard, say, February 1st. February 15th and March 1st, and that'll cost a whopping, you know, dollar fifty. not even that. Uh, well, maybe with the cost of the postcard and stuff, you might be at three bucks to send three postcards to somebody that you know is interested in your services, and potentially they weren't happy with the service that they ended up getting, because they probably got somebody, right. if you could right, get right. them. Yeah. Um, but having the amount of leads coming in allowed Billy to get somewhat picky and you know, I, I don't really know if you did drop some problem customers or low dollar customers or what, but you know, you had that option. I'd say mainly what it helped me do was like to centralize my, like my routes. Yes. You know, if somebody was a little far out, I didn't feel the need to be like, oh, we can drive 10 minutes to you. Right. You know, I got to be able to, you know, tell someone, hey, you're a little far out from us. Maybe in the future we'll be out that way or whatever. Yep. So, yep. so really, you know, we have multiple stops now that are three, four houses. That's really how you. That's how you make that's money. That's how you make money. It, specific, you know. Specifically, cutting grass and treating lawns and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not nearly as big of a deal if you're driving a little bit to do a you know thousand dollar mulch job. You right. know what I'm saying? It's fine. Yeah. But when you're cutting grass, every week you got to be at the same places, so you need the route to make sense. Yes. You know, so. And I, I work with a lot, a lot of land, a lot of landscape business owners, right? And. The, the fact of the matter is, is there's only so much you can charge to cut somebody's grass. So to make money, it's really your job as, as the business, business owner, whatever, marketing person for that business to get their routes tight. Yeah, Because sure. there, there's a cap. It's, you know what I'm saying? I'm obviously a lawn and landscape guy. I don't think down on anybody doing it, but you can't just pick out your, your the amount you're gonna charge because I'm the best at cutting grass. Like, right. Everybody and their brother is has a truck and trailer these days, and they cut grass, and they're a landscaper. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, At least around here. There, yeah. There. I mean, I think we have a lot, a lot more lawn landscape businesses in the greater Cincinnati area than the majority of the rest of the country. For I, sure. I would have to say. I mean, I couldn't imagine. But there's a reason for that. I feel like our area could support it. They can support more. Lawn and landscaping companies. Like yes, we, we build a lot of houses in this area yes. every year. And that, that's a great point. I worked with some guys. Say, uh, I I never actually finished this website. Uh, the guy that I was building it for decided he didn't want to do it anymore. Sold his business, so I'm so, supposed to be finishing it up for the new owner. Uh, but having trouble communicating with this guy, which I don't understand because he doesn't even owe any money to finish the job, right. so I'm just, just like, why would you not just tell me the stuff I'm asking you to tell me? Uh, but they're, they're in Oklahoma, uh, Grand Lake, Oklahoma area, and as I was building this site, looking at the, the demographic area, 
And I'm, I'm just talking about looking down from uh, Google Maps view where I can see the streets and the houses and the buildings and stuff like this. I'm like, this, this area cannot support. Yeah. I, I don't know if it can support one lawn care business, and I guarantee you there's more than one here. So that, that's something to consider because Jonathan Potoshnik, the guy who's you know, made service autopilot, he says that a lot, that you may have to move to build a business. You can't just decide, I want to do this if the market does not need your services. Yeah. So we're, we're in a great area where people, uh, there's plenty of people that have enough money to afford a mowing service, have, have mulch laid down for them, have their plants pruned, have their leaves cleaned up, going into snow removal and aerating and overseeding and stuff like that. Although, you know, this would be the first year Billy would ever have to deal with um, quoting, aerating, and overseeding jobs. And I just kind of explained to this, this to him on the phone the other day that in, in my experience, quoting, aerating, and overseeding jobs, people are often shocked by the price. And it's not necessarily the cost of the aeration itself. It's the cost of the overseed because of the price of, get, of grass seed. Yeah, see, it's not cheap. Yeah, people do not understand how much grass seed costs apparently, and then you're putting down, you know, if you're overseeding three or four pounds per square feet, you know, I'm talking fescue, I don't know what the rate is for all the grass types and blah, 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 but it, it adds up very fast, and in our area, if you get a speck of grass seed in a mulch bed, grass is growing in that mulch bed. There's no question about it, so you can't just, you know, just... Throw be reckless everywhere. throwing yeah. your grass lead out. If you have mulched areas, beds around the house, tree rings and stuff like that, that's gonna need to be seeded by hand if you're gonna do a thorough and complete job, which is how I would recommend doing any job that you do. <laughs> I would not recommend skimping, cutting corners or anything. I think, um, yeah, so I, I think another thing I wanted to talk about in this video is Another reason why your business has grown so much, and yes, you, you had plenty of leads and opportunities to get new clients, Yeah. but Billy's a people person. He has his best friend running the other crew for him, and he has his nephew uh, in his truck with yeah. him. And then for a while, earlier this year, he had Ethan, who, uh, not Ethan Alphalon's Ethan from the podcast, but the Ethan that used to work for me, that everybody loves love this him. Ethan. Everybody Ethan. loves Ethan. And uh, he ended up getting a, a, another job in, in left and whatnot. But he had Ethan for a little while. But my point is, is all of these guys are very approachable. Uh, they're you know, clean cut. They're um, very nice. They know how to talk to people. Uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say. It doesn't but, seem important, but I'm not wearing it now. But we have like a uniform. We have a shirt that every employee has and they have to wear to work every day, you know, and something that simple, something like, uh, you know, having hygiene rules and whatnot, like they, they need to be clean, they need to have the shirt on, you know, if they want to wear pants, we're cool with that, if they want to wear shorts, that doesn't matter, it's just they need to look kind of in uniform. I, I think that's really important because, you know, if you're a guy with a cut-off sleeve shirt on in someone's backyard sweating, you don't necessarily look like you're a company cutting the grass. You're just a guy doing work. So, which is fine too, but for us, like, I think that it's helped people to, you know, separate us from, you know, the guys in the truck that, that will show up and do some work, but, you know, aren't necessarily yeah. an LLC or anything like that. They, they basically, so. basically, they built a rapport with their client base. Their client base likes them, trusts them, is happy to refer them they send because they're customers comfortable customers. with them on their property. They know if they reach out via text, phone call, or email, somebody's going to get back with them in a reasonable amount of time, and they're going to show up to do the job and do the job well. So there's lots of pieces to the puzzle of running a lawn and landscape business, and marketing's just one aspect, but you need, to, you need to find the people. The people is the whole key to everything, and then it's you know getting back with people, making your customers feel comfortable, and developing that relationship with them so they're not willing to hop companies when they get the door hanger where somebody's gonna cut it for 25 bucks or whatever. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? For sure. 
Yeah, I think it's good to make a personal relationship with your customers if you can. You know, it's not yes. like like you need to stop and waste an hour or nothing like that. But I right. Our oldest customer, I just found out this because it was his birthday the other day. He's ninety seven. Whoa! And we have two World War idea. World War Two veterans. He's our second one. He's ninety seven. And Holy moly. so I talk to him every time I'm there, just because he he's home alone and his nice. you know and uh, his caretaker or whatever is there, but his family's not. That's great. So his his daughter asked us to make sure that we would be their lawn care company forever because she likes the fact that I say hello to her dad when I'm there. <laughs> it's a perfect it's, example. It's that simple. Uh, sometimes literally. just be a person and they'll take take kindly to yeah. that. And, and just expanding on that note, we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon because I gotta run. Uh, you know, as your business grows, because at the, at the end of owning Loyal Green, I honestly, I didn't talk to some customers. I never went to their property. They may have very well not known my name. Yeah. But I had employees that were building those relationships for me. So for sure, it, it all worked out. Um, obviously, I, I had had enough uh, <laughs> and sold the business. But um, I'm very happy with where I am now, what I'm doing, and it's awesome watching Billy's business grow. So. And it's, it's not going to stop anytime too soon, so Heck no. <laughs> you'll be around for a while. Okay, but until the next video, you already know, keep, keep making, making money. money.